Yo, what is good, YouTube, and welcome back to another JC2K video. In today's video, we are going to be ranking the top 10 best point guards in NBA 2K22, my team. Now, before we hop into this video, the first thing that I want to mention is that the point guard position right now is unbelievably stacked. I would say that's true for the mo for most of the positions that you can play cards at, obviously, in my team right now, but I think the point guard position is so incredibly close. It is incredibly hard to make a ranking like this. I mean, I literally think you could make an argument for anybody between about i'm not sure i mean number two to number 12 like i there are guys on this who aren't on this top 10 who i think you could make an argument to be in the top five like it is so incredibly close and so opinion based on the point guard position right now i really think there's so much interchangeability this is just my personal opinion and i had to make some really tough decisions as well with list lists so just keep that in mind um with this list is that this is my opinion and it is very very hard with how close all these cards are and how well 2k has done of releasing content that isn't overpowered this year that it's made it very very hard to make lists like this so we just keep that in mind while you watch the video also if you haven't make sure you hit that subscribe button to help me push towards the 4,000 subscriber mark on the channel upload every single day we really appreciate your support if you haven't already if you do subscribe without further ado let's hop right into the video before i get to the top 10 i just want to mention a few guys who didn't make this list and this should show you all how deep this point guard position is right now i didn't put galaxy up with chris paul on this list i didn't put pink diamond magic johnson on this list pink diamond damian lillard um galaxy opal steph curry is not on this list like i think some people in some people's hands steph curry might be the best point guard in the game if you have one juice with extra hall of fame badges like for example fade to justin if y'all know him um curry legitimately might be the best point guard in the game for him based on his play style and things like that but for me personally i can't even put him in the top 10 uh, and that just goes to show how crazy this uh, top 10 point guards is at number 10 i have dono mitchell who i honestly think is arguably a top three point guard in the game i think you could make an argument for it but i just can't put him that high because he's only six foot one and that is massive flaw despite the fact that he has really long arms elite badges literally 65 total badges one of the more complete cards in my team across the board needs rim protector can't get a brick wall needs chef as well but there's a couple badges besides that he really comes with basically everything um elite perimeter defender solid interior defender elite slasher shooter great speed speed ball and acceleration badges are incredible the biggest issue with this card easily is the fact that he's only six foot one and his jumper isn't done quick it's still on normal timing not a super fast jumper so that does hold him back a tiny bit as well his movement is really good he's got great sigs on full court and half court um but yeah i think the jumper not being incredibly elite hurts him a little bit because he is only six foot one and the fact i mean obviously that he is six foot one that's gonna hurt a card that's gonna hold them back when you're going up against six four six five six seven point guards in my team like it's just gonna be tough to use a guy like donovan mitchell against those guys who have significantly more size than him at number nine we have a slightly bigger pg who admittedly doesn't have the movement that donovan mitchell but does but that would be Dwayne wade uh specifically the new year's resolution evo wade uh, who's six four with a six ten wingspan he has much better size than a donovan mitchell better interior defender with the high block rating badges are also really good with hoff sniper quick first step clamps a bunch of solid other ones as well pretty complete card also doesn't get room protector but post lockdown brick wall those three badges because he is an evo card you can't add those to him so those hurt besides that though he does come with basically everything else really good uh, shot blocker for a guard he's one of the best interior defensive guards in the game uh, elite score in terms of his slashing ability really good speed and excel good shooter the biggest thing with him is that he has the slasher dribble style that's the thing that holds him back from being pretty high up on this list um, because of the slasher dribble style his movement just isn't as elite and the fact that he isn't incredibly elite sized either those things prevent him just a bit from being any higher than number 10 or i'm sorry number nine but i still think wade is a great card and i think you could make an argument just as with most of these cards on this list for them to be higher on the list john morant is the guy i did decide to put at number eight um jaw is honestly much better than i anticipated that he would be when i found out we were getting a john morant card six there were the six seven wingspan five hot spots all from outside the three-point line um has hall of fame catch limitless sniper quick first step floor general really good finishing badges as well as hall of fame clamps even a solid interior defender really good perimeter defender great slasher speed shooter everything card is just elite all the way across the board paul george base john wall upper um it's a super smooth solid release not the quickest in the world but definitely super easy to green sigs are pretty good as well with profile behind the back really good half court sigs the kobe size up uh i do wish the jumper was a little bit faster and the fact that he has a, only a 75 interior 75 block at only six foot three he doesn't have the greatest defensive ability in the world and those two things are probably the reason that i do have him at number eight instead of higher up on this list at number seven we have one of the best budget point cards in the game in mr bob Sura. the beautiful thing about bob Sura is that he's six foot five with a solid player build so he does look pretty tall on the court which is super valuable also pretty complete all-around card especially for a diamond has a half posterizer catch and shoot quick for step pogo stick really solid perimeter er, perimeter defender decent on the interior as well statistically he's not as good as guys like john morant and donovan mitchell especially but he does get um badges that you can add to him like that i love the spot up chef 
um, rim protector post lockdown, things like that. So definitely want to badge this card out. Statistically, like I said, not as great as those cards, but the fact that he's six foot five with a good player build is huge. Also has jump shot 38, which is one of the easiest to green releases in the game, despite the fact that it still is only on normal. Really good sigs as well. Um, he's a great, great card. Statistically, not going to hold a candle to guys like John Donovan, but I think on the court he outperforms then has that better size, which is huge on the defensive end of the court as well. So that's why I have him slotted in at number seven. At number six, we have the new Jeremy Lin card, who I think is another great budget PG, a guy who you can get for around 20,000 MT, who really doesn't have a lot of flaws in the court. Only 6'3", similar to Jaw, but he is a better defender than Jaw, better interior defense, elite perimeter defensive ability as well. He's glitched defensively, has Hoff clamps, Intimidator, Menace, Pick Dodger, Pick Pocket. Uh, only gold's quick first step. I wish that was on Hoff, but even on gold, he still moves pretty solidly. 85 driving nug, really good shooter, great athleticism. Badge-wise, again, one of the more complete guys. Needs a limitless spot up and protector chase down artist post lockdown, things like that. But you give him those few badges and he is souped as all get out. Uh, jumper, jump shot 40. It's another one of those jumpers. It's not bad, but on normal, it's just not super fast. And I wish it was a little bit quicker. And that does hurt him a bit. Shifty dribble style as well. Um, really good card. I mean, he just, I wish he was maybe a little bit taller and had the jumper on quick. If he had that, I could put him higher. Even as is, though, I still think he does deserve his spot at number six. At number five, we have Ben Gordon, who is yet another relatively small PG, but a really, really good card. Like, this card is a stud. Very underlooked, I think. 6'3 with a 6'8 wingspan, so he's nice long arms. Hot spots are everywhere outside the three-point line. Ten hops include sniper, quick chain, quick first step, unpluckable catch, dead eye, downhill, pickpocket. Really good defender on the perimeter, super solid anyway. Not the greatest interior defender, especially at only six foot three. Not an elite dunker either, I will say. Those things hurt him a bit, but he has 95 speed and excel, as well as 95 speed with ball, elite shooter. Badges are really good, like I said, can get the rim protector, the chase down, or the post lockdown as well. Um, jump shot 22 on quick with Kobe Upper. He's phenomenal. This is one of the best jumpers on this list. I really do love Ben's release. It's absolutely phenomenal. And the quick dribble style as well with the pro two between the legs. So he has great sigs. That's the thing about this card. Really good sigs, an elite jumper. Um, is still a solid defender, solid slasher. I'm going to put him top five because I think jumper is super important and sigs are super important for a PG. And that is what Ben Gordon does have going for him that I think is a little bit better than guys like Lynn, Ja, uh, and he has better size than Donovan Mitchell. Just I think those things combined probably put him just a bit over those guys for me personally at number five. Although I could be wrong. Again, like I said, a lot of opinion to this list. Larry Hughes is the guy I'm putting at number four. Larry Hughes is another 6'5 PG, similar to a guy like Sura, but badge wise, he's better than Sura. 6'5 with a 6'8 wingspan, only three out of five hot spots, but six hops, and they're all defensive. He has ankle braces, clamps, interceptor, menace, and pickpocket on Hoff. Elite defensive stats on the perimeter and really solid on the interior. Another card who can get rim protector post lockdown. Uh, can use handles for day sniper and a little spot up as well. Those five badges added to this card make him really, really good. Solid shooter, dunker, decent speed, excellence with a ball. It's not the greatest, but he's an elite defensive point guard who's also 6'5. We'll get you paint stops, we'll get you perimeter stops. Uh, has a really smooth and quick release with 84 on quick and has decent sigs with the shifty dribble style. Good half court sigs as well. This card is super nice, really nice jumper as well. Not the greatest offensive point guard in the game, but with good sigs and a good jumper, it does make up for the fact that his stats and badges aren't quite as good as some of the guys lower them. And I think he gives you defensive ability that's really about as good as any PG in the game for the most part. So for that reason, I slide him in at number four. At number three, we got Penny Hardaway. And people are going to, I'm going to catch flack, I think, for this because some people don't like Penny Hardaway at this point. And that's okay. I still think the fact that Penny Hardaway is six foot seven and has a good player build is really one of the most important attributes in the game, despite the fact that he's not the fastest. His defense is solid, but no, nothing jumps off the page of you. Same thing with his dunking, shooting. Jumper is not great. Sigs are really good, though. At a six seven, having great sigs, that is super valuable. Additionally, has really good dunk animations, gets some decent contacts against smaller players. Doesn't get limitless, but he does get sniper. Doesn't get um, clamps, hyperdrive, quick chain either. There's a couple badges he doesn't get, but that is okay because this card, I promise y'all, is still a top PG in my team. He is a really good interior defender because of his height as well as the fact that he does have solid enough stats. Really solid perimeter defender as well, even without the clamps badge. He can get rim protector, he can get sniper, he can get post lockdown intimidator, ball stripper, things like that to make him a super good all around card. And uh, just overall, I'm a huge fan of Penny Hardaway still. Despite the fact that his jumper is a bit slow as well, it's super easy to green. And uh, overall, I just think Penny at being at six foot seven helps you out so much in terms of your defensive versatility and your offensive versatility being able to mash with the guard. Penny is still my backup PG on my God squad. And honestly, still think he's number three in the game at that point guard position. At number two, 
I'm going LaMelo Ball. I don't think this is any surprise. The thing about LaMelo Ball that prevents him from being by far the best point guard in the game is the fact that he has the slasher dribble style. It's the same dribble style as Dwayne Wade. Um, and like I said, it's something that does hurt hold a card back that he doesn't have elite dribble sticks like most of the PVs on this list. That being said, even on normal, this jumper is super fast. Really, really nice jumper. I'm a big fan of it. Also, a solid shooter, solid dunker, solid athletic ability, solid defender, just an overall solid card. Better on paper, I would say, than a guy like Penny Hardaway and also additionally has better badges with Hoff Catch, Deadeye Sniper, Bullet Passer, Floor General, Hyperdrive, Dimer, Interceptor. Interceptor on Hoff is so nice on a PG, especially a guy like Lomelo who's 6'6 with a 6'10 wing spin and has a big player build. His hair makes him look closer to 6'7, which is super nice. And overall just gets more badges than a guy like uh, Penny as well. He's a better overall defender than Penny, better shooter than Penny, quicker jumper than Penny. Sigs aren't as good as Penny, but the fact of the matter is he's another guy who has elite size, the point guard position, in addition to solid movement and elite shooting ability, able to mash, able to defend at a high level. He is just such a good all-around card. No significant flaws in this Lamelo, even with the slasher dribble style. I think he is number two on this list. But at number one, we're going Dark Matter Gary Payton. I don't think this is a shocker for people. GP is a great, great card. He's a card who people don't have, generally speaking, because of how hard he is to get. Like, almost nobody has this card, but if you do, you probably have the best PG in the game. 53 total badges, hotspots from everywhere, 6'4 with a 6'7 wingspan, elite um, badges in terms of the playmaking and Hall of Fame defensive badges as well, with basically every Hoff badge on the perimeter you could want, as well as quick first step and pluckable downhill dimer. Incredible defensive stats on the perimeter, like basically perfect, really good on the interior as well. Solid dunker, really good shooter, really great athleticism. This card has everything you could want. Also, shifty dribble style, pipping behind the back, pro tip between the legs. He's got the best full court dribble stakes in the game. His half court stakes are really good. The only issue with this card is the fact that his jumper is still on normal. I wish he had jump shot 40 on quick. If he had it on quick, he would be by far and away by a mile the best PG in the game. I still think he's the best PG in the game because of his total badges, the amount of incredible Hall of Fame badges he has, how good his stats are, the fact that he has basically everything going for him except for a fast jumper. And the jumper is fast enough and smooth enough and easy enough to green that I definitely still think he is the best PG in the game. So this is my ranking of the top 10 pgs in the game like i said at the beginning of the video this is such a hard ranking to do right now because of how well 2k has done with content and how close all these cards are you can run any of these 10 cards in a competitive setting and have success and that doesn't even include the guys like like i said uh opal steph curry pink diamond magic johnson pink diamond gary payton etc like there's guys who you can run who are not even in this top 10 i think you could still run in a competitive setting and make an argument for being even as high as like top five on this list um so yeah just keep that in mind there's a ton of great cards at the point guard position right now so do remember that when you're looking at this list but uh, hopefully you did enjoy this video if you did make sure you hit that like button leave a comment and subscribe and i'll be back with more 2k content very very soon i appreciate y'all peace